I'm Laurie Cardoza-Moore, and this is Focus on Israel. that many New Testament scriptures have been twisted to justify anti-Semitism? How can you learn how to recognize and stand against this misuse of the Bible? On our program today, you'll hear from a distinguished New Testament professor, and the truth will set you free. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Focus on Israel. I'm Laurie Cardoza-Moore, founder of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, a nonprofit organization dedicated to educating and sharing the message of Christian biblical responsibility to the people and land of Israel in the face of a growing global genocidal anti-Semitism. Proclaiming Justice to the Nations was birthed to stop the silence, to wake up Christians and people of conscience to the realities of a world bent on destroying Israel and the Jewish people. Since 2005, PJTN has a proven track record of fighting for the rights of Israel and the Jewish people, a record of standing firm in the face of overwhelming odds against a world of Jew and Israel hatred, a record of not compromising on the very plan of God. PJTN's strategy involves a campaign of biblical truth. The more Christians who see our materials and our media content, the more that will stand with the Jewish people and Israel. Media is a prime weapon of our strategy. On our program today, we have a renowned professor who is joining us from Vanderbilt University. Her name is Dr. Amy Jill Levine. She has a distinguished career, and I'm excited about introducing you to her today. Dr. Levine is a university professor of New Testament and Jewish Studies, Mary Jane Worthen Professor of Jewish Studies, and Professor of New Testament Studies at Vanderbilt Divinity School and College of Arts and Science. She is also an affiliated professor with Wolf Institute, Center for the Study of Jewish-Christian Relations at Cambridge, England. She has held office in the Society of Biblical Literature, the Catholic Biblical Association, and the Association for Jewish Studies. Her books include The Misunderstood Jew, The Church, and The Scandal of the Jewish Jesus. The Meaning of the Bible, What the Jewish Scriptures and the Christian Old Testament Can Teach Us, and The New Testament Methods and Meanings with Warren Carter, and Short Stories by Jesus, The Enigmatic Parables of a Controversial Rabbi. Dr. Levine also co-edited the Jewish Annotated New Testament with Mark Brettler. She holds a BA from Smith College and an MA and PhD from Duke University and honorary doctorates from the University of Richmond, the Episcopal Theological Seminary of the Southwest, University of South Carolina Upstate, Drury University, Christian Theological Seminary, and Franklin College. Professor Levine presently teaches New Testament at Vanderbilt University School in Nashville, Tennessee. A very bright and articulate Jewish scholar teaching about Christian scripture in the very belt buckle of the Bible Belt, most unusual. We had a very enlightening conversation about how numerous scriptures have been twisted over the centuries to propagate Christian anti-Semitism and replacement theology. For most of Christian history, replacement theology has been the mainstream interpretation of the New Testament of all three major historical traditions within Christianity, Orthodox, Roman Catholic, and Protestant. Dr. Levine expounds on how various scriptures have been taken out of context and used against the Jewish people as a dangerous and deadly weapon. Thank you so much for being with us today. Happy to be with you. This is exciting. We've been trying to make this interview happen for some time. And, About 15 and, years, Oh yes. my gosh, yes, I know. I can't believe that that much time has gone by. 
but um, but your interview today is very timely. It's a very timely one, and it's unfortunate that we even have to have this conversation. But um, I want to talk a little bit about your background first before we get into some of the questions that I have for you for today's program. Um, it's interesting that you, being Jewish, from the Orthodox Jewish persuasion, teaching at a at Vanderbilt Divinity School, teaching New Testament studies, um, and to Christians, yeah, and so teaching how did that about happen? the Hebrew roots of Christianity. <laughs> so how did you? How did this happen? Well, I do belong to an Orthodox synagogue, but I am not Orthodox in practice. But you know, this is my community, and I love it. Um, when I was a child in New England, I grew up in a neighborhood that was predominantly Roman Catholic, Portuguese Roman Catholic. Uh, and when I was a little girl, a kid on the school bus said to me one day, you killed our Lord. Mm. And I, that made absolutely no sense to me. So I started asking questions. Why would somebody say something like that? Right. Um, I started going to religious education class with my Catholic friends to trace out where this anti-Jewish teaching came from. I was seven then. I'm about to turn 62. Oh I've been doing this a very long time. And as I've continued to ask questions and continued to study, what I realize is that one can read the New Testament and become anti-Jewish, but that's, right. not, that's not necessary, and it's not the correct way of being a Christian, and it's bad theology. I want to begin with um, one of the most important projects you were involved in editing, the Jewish Annotated New Testament, and I understand that there is a second edition out. As of September 2017, yes. So in the second edition, we have about 70 separate Jewish scholars, none of whom, by the way, is a Messianic Jew. They are right. just Jews, saying, how do we as Jews understand the New Testament writings, Matthew, Romans, Revelation, in their own Jewish context in the first sin? Um, and we said, not only give us the history, but tell us what you know about how Jews would have responded to some of these passages over time. Talk about how some of these passages have been interpreted in anti-Jewish ways, explain why that's wrong, and show the better way of interpreting it. So for every biblical book where we know that sermons are going to go off track or Bible studies will wander into anti-Judaism, we pulled out little gray boxes saying, don't go here, wrong, go here instead. And then we put in close to 50 back essays to provide pastors and Bible study leaders and anyone interested in the New Testament the Jewish information they need in order to read the Gospels appropriately. Who were the Pharisees? How did Jewish law actually function? How have Jews looked at Jesus over time? How have we looked at Paul and Mary over time? What is the state today of Jewish Christian relations and where might we be able to go in the future? But we do hope that Jewish readers would read the Jewish annotated New Testament because the New Testament, as you mentioned, is part of Jewish history. Right. Um, mm -hmm. If I want to know about Jewish women in the Galilee, the New Testament is my best book. If I want to know anything about Pharisees, well, Paul is the only Pharisee from whom we've got written records. Of course I would read the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And whereas we Jews will not agree with our Christian brothers and sisters about, say, uh, the Trinity, or what happened on Easter Sunday. Right. Surely we can agree that Jesus was a Jew talking to other Jews and he had to make sense in that context. Um, moving on, um, I want to talk about um, the, the history of Christian anti-Semitism and its origins. You have found verses in the New Testament, specifically in the books of 1 Thessalonians, a passage in Matthew, and in John chapter 8 that historically have been used by Christians to persecute the Jewish people. What have you found, Dr. Levine? As if people need excuses for evil. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, Matthew depicts all the people, the Greek is pasolos, all the people, every person, clamoring for Jesus' crucifixion. Crucify him, crucify him, the crowd says. Let his blood be on our heads and on the heads of our children. And because of that verse, Christian readers said, oh, it's not just the Jews at that time and place who are responsible for backing Pilate into a corner, but it's Jews at all times, mm. their children and their children's children down from the generations. Mm. Um, in the Gospel of John chapter eight, Jesus says to the Jews, and the Greek here is eudaios, the Jews. Right. You Jews are children of the devil and you always mm. do your father's desires. I, I have twice actually been asked by nice Christian ladies mm -hmm. um, whether I had horns 
because between that verse and Michelangelo's statue of Moses with the, the rays coming out, they were convinced that Jews had horns because we were actually children of the devil. And when I said to them, no, we don't, they, they were actually quite relieved. You mentioned in the preface of the Jewish Annotated New Testament that first and second century Judaism, its customs, literature, and interpretations of biblical texts play a significant role in the New Testament authors and their writings. Can you explain? Sure. Um, we can't understand Jesus or the Gospels unless we know how synagogues functioned, mm -hmm. unless we know what Jews thought about the temple both while it was standing and after the year 70, after the Romans burned it down, how they dealt with the loss of the temple. Mm -hmm. We can't understand the New Testament unless we understand how Jews understood their own scriptures. It's not as if the book of Genesis or uh, the law codes in Leviticus and Deuteronomy says, say, you know, here we are, just do what we tell you because all texts have to be interpreted. Even today in the United States, we have a constitution, but we have lawyers to tell us how to enact it and what's legal right. and what isn't. Mm -hmm. So we need to know something about how Jews were debating the law in the first century. We need to know something about Jewish Gentile relations. We need to know about Jewish messianic expectations. Why, for example, is Paul going out to Gentiles, to non-Jews, and saying, by the way, the God of Israel is the God of the world, and you need to turn from your idols and to worship that God. How does that message fit within other Jewish messianic speculations? If we strip Judaism out of the New Testament, the New Testament becomes something that has no context, no history. Right. And Christianity is very much grounded in history in a specific time and a specific place. Very good. I want to take you to Israel in pictures and film. I want you to see how God's sovereign hand can be seen before our eyes right here in this land. That's why PJTN is offering a special anniversary package that includes a captivating new book and award-winning DVD. Israel Rising is a unique visual story of Israel's miraculous journey from unforgiving desert to thriving nation. Thousands of years ago, the prophet Ezekiel foretold a future time in which the arid land of Israel would come alive for its people. Now this breathtaking book documents the fulfillment of this vision as rarely seen photographs from the 1880s to the 1940s are juxtaposed with recent photos of the same locations. This book will inspire and captivate you as it illuminates Israel's foretold awakening in a new and unforgettable way. In addition, you'll receive the award-winning documentary, Israel Indivisible, The Case for the Ancient Homeland. This inspiring film examines the many political twists and turns that make Israel the world's most controversial nation. From Abraham and the Promise to the issues facing the Jewish state today, the film examines the historical, archeological, legal, and biblical foundations for the modern state of Israel. This is a limited time offer for these two remarkable resources for just a one-time gift of $70 today. Your generous donation will help ensure that PJTN stays on the front lines and in the headlines of all the important issues facing Israel and our Jewish brethren. So please go to PJTN.org today. From studying history, it's very clear that what starts with the Jews never ends only with the Jews we must strongly stand against any anti-Semitic trends. For if not stopped, they'll cause harm to all of us, and we'll witness the downfall of our Judeo-Christian Western culture. Today, many people say there's no longer a need for a Jewish state, that Jews around the world no longer need a place of refuge. But anyone who has heard recent statistics about the worldwide rise in anti-Semitism would never make such a claim. The reality is that neo-Nazi groups and Nazi sympathizers are increasing around the world. Surveys show that over one billion people in the world harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. Close to 50% believe that Jews have too much power in the business world, and two-thirds of the world's population has never heard of the Holocaust, or believe the historic accounts of it are inaccurate. Don't let yourself be manipulated by evil people with a wicked agenda. When the self-serving villains are in control, good people from all religions suffer. Muslims, Christians, and all people of conscience should stand proudly and show respect for a country that gives so much to the world in so many ways. Do your part, do your research, 
and do what you can to make a difference. Because what happens in Israel does affect us all. This is not just a Jewish or just an Israeli problem. This is a problem for all humanity, for each and every one of us who believe in freedom and human rights. Learn more about what you can do at PJTN.org. One of the most important works in Dr. Levine's career was co-editing the Jewish Annotated New Testament. First published in 2011, it was a groundbreaking work bringing the New Testament Jewish background to the attention of students, clergy, and general readers. 80 Jewish scholars bring together unparalleled scholarship to shed new light on the text and bring new insights to the study of the New Testament. It is an essential volume that places the New Testament writings in a context that will enlighten readers of any faith or none. It includes introductions to each New Testament book with guidance for reading and specific information about how the book relates to the Judaism of the period. 54 essays are included on topics such as Marian Jewish tradition, Christology, and Messianic Judaism. For Christian readers, the Jewish Annotated New Testament offers a window into the first century world of Judaism from which the New Testament springs. There are explanations of Jewish concepts such as food laws and rabbinic argumentation. It also provides a much needed correction to many centuries of Christian misunderstandings of the Jewish faith. For Jewish readers, this volume provides the chance to encounter the New Testament, a text of vast importance in Western, European, and American culture, with no religious agenda, and with guidance from Jewish experts in theology, history, and Jewish and Christian thought. It also explains Christian practices, such as the Eucharist. I want to encourage our viewers, if you do not have this Bible in your list of Bibles that you reference, I want to strongly encourage you to do so. Dr. Amy Jill and many others contributed to this incredible project. As co-editor, she spent over three years of her life on this enormous undertaking. Why is this important for Christians to understand, especially today, what the <laughs> conversation that we've had so far? Why is this so important? Here's how I explain it to my students. I say, you know, do you love Jesus? To which they say, yeah, of course, because they want to be right. ministered. Of course you love Jesus. Well, if you love someone, don't you want to know about that person's background? Where that person grew up, uh, the culture from which that person came, the text that that person read, the friends that that person had. In other words, if you love someone, you want to know that person's context. You want to know the person's background, what shaped that person. It's history that provides us that information. Um, my friend Ben Witherington, who was a good evangelical New Testament scholar, uh, is wont to say, a text without a context is just a pretext for making it say anything you want. Oh, and I think that's, that's a great quote. Absolutely. How has Greco-Romanism influenced the text of the New Testament and enabled the anti-Semitism that has been pervasive throughout Christian history? Mm -hmm. Um, it's not just the Greco-Roman versus the Jewish background. That would be too simplistic. We also have to remember that Jews were under Hellenistic civilization for 300 years by the time Jesus was born because of Alexander the Great. Um, but what happens is if we start focusing more on the philosophical side, the Greek mythological side, and we leave out the Tanakh, we leave out Second Temple Judaism, we're going to get a very skewed picture of what happens in, in the New Testament itself. By the time the creeds are written, um, church and synagogue have more or less separated. What we forget is that you could be a Jew and a worshiper of Jesus, and that was perfectly okay in a first century context. Right. It wasn't like there were Christians over here and Jews over here. Right. Um, it's only in the fifth century when you can really, really see the clear difference. But what happens is we think, oh, Jesus was Christian. All the Marys were Christian, Paul right. and James and so They were all Christian. No, right. they're Jews. Absolutely. It really helps us put the Bible into complete perspective, especially the New Testament. Um, we are witnessing a rise of supersessionism and replacement theology today with the recent Bethle Bethlehem Bible College 
in Bethlehem, Israel, many evangelical Christians are adopting the narrative that Jesus was a Palestinian and he would have been prevented from passing through the checkpoint of the IDF if he were here today. Things are even worse than that. Um, so that one will hear sermons say on the Gospel of John chapter 20, which talks about the disciples hiding behind locked doors and the Greek is for fear of the Jews, the Adaioi. Mm -hmm. And then the sermon is, oh, that must be the Palestinians hiding behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. In other words, the IDF is really. Um, this type of interpretation is understandable, I believe, from a Palestinian Christian perspective. A, a number of Palestinian Christians I know uh, still have keys to their homes that they left in 1948. Yes. So I, I, I feel for them, but deploying anti-Jewish stereotypes is not a way of making peace. Mm -hmm. um, talking about supersessionism and, and claiming Jesus not to be a Jew would be no more palatable than somebody saying there are no such things as Palestinians, because if you're a Palestinian, mm -hmm. you're not going to agree with that. Correct. Even the Wall Street Journal reported last week that the growing number of evangelical Christian millennials who supported Israel and Jewish people is on the decline. You're wor you work with millennials you're, mm -hmm. and the next geners that are coming through your classes. What are you hearing and what are you seeing? Do you see this as a growing trend? Does it bother you? Um, yeah, it's a growing trend. Uh, and it's millennials, not just evangelicals, uh, but uh, the unchurched. Uh, and a number of Jewish youth who are quite disaffected from what they see as abuses of uh, Israeli, for example, settlement expansion, mm -hmm. um, tearing down olive groves. Um, these are problems. Uh, looking at what's happening now in Gaza, um, on the one hand, it's horrible that people are being shot. On the other hand, it's horrible that people are trying to get over the fence and run into Israel and, and, and take over countries and set their fields on fire with kites. Um, we listen to the news that we want to hear. Mm -hmm. But I also remember scenes of battle and scenes of dead children. And then mm. what do you do? Um, what I would like to see is more openness. You mentioned listening to other people's stories. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to listen to Palestinian stories, Palestinian mm -hmm. Christians, Palestinian mm -hmm. Muslims, and to listen to Jewish stories, Jews on, uh, from Shalom Akshav, from Peace Now, right. Jews who are part of settler movements, mm -hmm. and say, how do we share this land? Mm -hmm. The biblical view, as far as I can tell, is a view that says, yes, the land belongs to the Jews, but not only the Jews. Right. Learn how to live together in peace and figure it out. And don't do it by taking over somebody else's field or taking over somebody else's apartment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, many Christians, when asked, are unfamiliar with these terms and how they perpetuate anti-Semitism and I'm, I'm talking about the terms of uh, supersessionism, um, replacement theology. What is modern day anti-Semitism? Can you define these terms and explain how they continue to exacerbate this age old hatred against Jews? Replacement theology is a specifically Christian way of looking at things, which says the Christian church takes over all the promises God made to Israel, right. all the covenants with Abraham, with David, mm -hmm. with Moses, all that passes away from the Jewish people and goes to the followers of Jesus. Um, so that replacement theology sees absolutely no value in Jews remaining as Jews because they see Judaism as a dead religion. And any Jew who continues to hang on to our ancestral faith right. is looked at as being replaced, something in the mm -hmm. past, something to be consigned for the trash heap. So where do, they, where do Christians that adhere to that mentality or that belief, where do they get this from? When in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus talks about a new covenant, and this mm -hmm. is the last supper scene, they say, oh, well, the new covenant means that all those old ones are done. Except that's not what a new covenant means. New covenants don't do away with the old one. They add right. to them. Have you experienced anti-Semitism? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, I've had students who refuse to work with me because I'm a Jew. I've had swastikas slipped underneath my door. I've had threatening letters. I've had threatening phone calls. Um, mm. You know, and sometimes I'm not sure what they're so upset with me because they're not, they were because I'm a Jew. Are they concerned that I'm a woman and I'm interested in the role of women in religion? Right. Uh, are they concerned that I'm not interested in demonizing others, that, that I worry about 
uh, my GLBTQI friends, mm -hmm. uh, my friends who are not heterosexual, and can they have the same rights as everybody else? Right. Um, I, I'm interested in enfranchisement and compassion and mm -hmm. justice. Right. But there are other people who are interested in swastikas and mm -hmm. nooses. Yeah. Mm. It's unfortunate, but we're very fortunate to have had you this hour. And I thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Once again, I can't say enough about this valuable resource that I use almost daily in my Bible study. It's available on Amazon and other online bookstores. Well, that's our program for today. And I want you to know we appreciate your support. The time to take a stand is now. Be a leader in your community and in your church. One person can make a difference. Get involved with and support pro-Israel organizations such as PJTN. Call your senators, congressmen. Let your elected leaders hear from you. Visit our website to learn more. Sign up to receive action alerts and order our films to share with family and friends. Please encourage everyone you know to tune in and become informed. God bless you. And thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren and all Israel. We'll see you next time on Focus on Israel. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, P.O. Box 682711, Franklin, Tennessee, 37068. You can also support PJTN online. Visit PJTN.org or call 1-877-873-9020. Anti-Semitism has reached epic proportions, and Israel is now surrounded by nations who seek its destruction. For Israel to lose just one battle would mean losing everything. As Christians, it is our biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and Israel. PJTN needs your help to reach more Christians with this urgent message. Please visit our website to become a member today and order our award-winning documentaries. You must decide that you won't be silent. Sign up now at PJTN.org. God bless you and thank you for your support and prayers.